Try something for me. Point to where you are. Point to where you think your consciousness is, where you're experiencing the world from. You're probably all now pointing somewhere around your head, right? We all feel like we are somewhere behind our eyes, but we know that all that's in there is your brain and not some secret compartment that holds all your, your thoughts and fears and desires. What I'm trying to say is that it's hard to measure where you are compared to where you feel you are. But what if we downloaded you into a machine body? Then we might be able to measure you in a different way. In 1995, the seminal anime film Ghost in the Shell posited a world so technologically advanced that most, if not all, of the human body became obsolete. Entire bodies and brains could be synthesized, and only a person's ghost or consciousness needed to be transferred into it. Technology-powered consciousness transfer is an interesting philosophical and political and ethical thought experiment, but what would actually transfer to a shell? If I somehow transferred my consciousness into this synthetic brain, would this brain change in some way? Would what I consider immaterial become material? What would my ghost weigh? In the early 20th century, a physician named Duncan McDougall famously reported that immediately after death, one of his patients weighed 21 grams less. And for over a hundred years, this figure has been used by people as the weight of your ghost or your soul, what many people consider to be you. McDougall's experiments were never considered scientific, so now that consciousness transfer isn't a completely out of bounds idea, I think we can replace this figure with something a lot more grounded. If you are your consciousness, as I would argue, then if someone wanted to transfer your ghost into a shell, they would first have to translate all the information that is in your brain into data, if that's even possible. But estimates for how much data your brain holds range anywhere from one terabyte to one petabyte. And the high-end estimate, one petabyte, is like stacking 39,064 gig flash drives 250 meters high. We don't understand consciousness yet, so thinking of it as just simple data points and connections probably isn't right. But it's a start, and a way to weigh your ghost. Huh. If we wanted to store the state of your brain right now, then using flash memory like is used in solid state drives wouldn't be a bad idea because even if your shell's power turned off, the state of your ghost would remain. The physics of flash memory is pretty complicated, but these are the basics. This is your basic flash memory unit. It's a transistor with what's called a floating gate right here. Right now, when there's no charge, your computer would register this setup in binary as a one. But if you start applying charge to it at the world line and what's called the bit line, electrons are compelled to flow through even this non-conductive material that separates them. However, as they do that, electrons begin to quantum tunnel and build up at the floating gate, acting to prevent charge from flowing to the world line. Once the flow of electrons is blocked by the floating gate by more than 50%, most of the flow is going between the source and the drain here, and your device reads it as a zero in binary. That's how you get both bits. But if you reverse the flow at the world line and the bit line, then all the gates are cleared and effectively erases the data. According to quantum mechanics, when electrons are trapped in the floating gate, when data is being written, they have more energy compared to when they are not trapped. This is what would give your ghost mass. Back in 2011, Professor John Kubiatowicz at UC Berkeley estimated that the energy increase of trapped electrons per bit was one one thousand trillionth of a joule. And although the total number of electrons in the system isn't changing, when some electrons have more energy, there is technically more mass, thanks to mass energy equivalence, in a full solid state drive. So mass energy equivalence from Einstein's E equals MC squared can estimate the mass increase in a fully loaded synthetic brain with maybe, on average, half zeros and half ones for data. Using the high-end estimate of 2.5 petabytes, the mass of your consciousness would be just 100 
femtograms. If you're not familiar with that number, that's a million times less massive than a grain of fine sand. Almost nothing. We think of ourselves as heavy, fleshy things, but transfer everything that could be considered you into a ghost in the shell style body, and that download wouldn't change any scale we've ever developed. Using this estimate, the consciousness of every single human being on Earth would weigh less than a single snowflake. Your digital ghost wouldn't weigh anywhere near 21 grams, but it would be something as close as you could get to a physical essence. So, how much would a shell's ghost weigh? Well, according to mass energy equivalents and using something like a solid state drive, just one ten trillionth of a gram, just the energy of electrons encoding the thunderstorms of brain activity inside of a collection of molecules resisting entropy futilely. It sounds even more dystopian than Ghost in the Shell, doesn't it? Don't worry. Even if, in the future, you are just ones and zeros, only you will arise from a unique and awesome arrangement of them. Because science. In the 1995 movie, the Major rips her own arms off on top of a tank, trying to open the tank. Uh, and she could, if she, was, if she had a synthetic body, she could totally do that. If her hands just had a ton of grip, and that maybe she could lock them like an eagle's talons do with tendons on their bones, which is super badass, but beside the point, then she could lock her hands onto the tank and then apply so much superhuman robot strength to her joints that she would rip her own arms off. Although at some point while they were ripping, they would probably give out, so maybe you wouldn't rip all the way unless you applied it super forcefully. So, uh, Ghost in the Shell, completely scientifically accurate.